roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> so last year was a roller coaster of emotions. And when I say that, there was a lot of things that were bothersome. So I had my job ads that I needed to worry about, um, group assignments, and most importantly, my thesis. So I ended up surprising myself quite a bit. And I'm doing pretty decent in the end. Ugh. Look at this snake right here. <laughs> Anyways, this video is going to be an advice on how I manage my thesis, as well as the mental aspect of it. To make this easy for you guys, I'll split this video up into three main segments. Prior to thesis, the early stages of thesis, and towards the later half or end of thesis. Anyways, if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. So with this stage, a lot of people tend to underestimate how valuable it is. Like, if you do it right, it pretty much sets the correct tone for the rest of your entire thesis. So, make sure to not neglect this session. Okay, the first thing you want to know is that there's three types of thesis that you can do. A research, design, and industry-related projects. So to start off, you want to start reflecting on previous years of uni and trying to figure out what you liked and what you didn't. If you're like me, you probably didn't know what to do exactly. <laughs> so to figure that out, you want to start asking your friends around you. You can start off by asking them how they found a project and why they chose it in the end. The next thing I recommend you is to sort of hit up lecturers slash researchers on courses that you found uh, somewhat interesting or you think you're going to find interest and message them quite early on. So let's say about a term in advance. The reason why you want to lock this in is that so they can at least give you, not just give you recommendations or suggestions on what you could do, but it also allows you to settle on your supervisor before everyone else submits their uh, order of preferences when it comes to finding the ideal supervisor for you. So a lot of people tend to rush this stage and do it last minute, but by then, they've already chosen the students. If you've got two or more semesters left, you want to try exploring electives that might spark an interest in your thesis. Don't just choose ones that are easy to do, but something that might also spark your interest. So have sort of like a balance. And from there, you can sort of decide what interests you and what doesn't. And if they're a simulation-based um, elective, even better. Alternatively, if you're working in an area at work relevant to your degree, you can ask your supervisor slash uh, manager on potential thesis topics that you could cover. And if you do well in it, that might pretty much secure your grad role. So yeah, try that technique. Technique? Tactic? I just combined the words. If you're not working and you still aren't sure what you want to get into, alternatively, you could also hit up startups that might spark your interest and potentially just ask them via cold calling them or just messaging them on LinkedIn, making sure there's something out there for you. And that sort of gives you an extra incentive to actually do well in it because if you do well, you end up securing a grad role, potentially. If you're still struggling to try to find a topic that you're interested in, you could also ask your supervisor for some, su some suggestions. If you're also an engineering student, you should also check out Engineers Without Borders research projects. I'll leave a link down below. Also, towards the end of the semester, your supervisor will be a lot more busier marking assignments, getting back to students and all that stuff. And also, it also makes it less stressful for you because if you do it early on, then you can focus more time on doing your assignments and studying for your final exams as well. So now that you start your thesis, you should have a rough plan of what you want to achieve in this semester and the next semester. When you do this, make sure it's quite flexible because there's a lot of unexpected situations that might encounter and it could affect the whole thing. So you want to be quite uh, flexible, you're able to rearrange it and it makes it easy to adjust. So for the case of me, COVID pretty much destroyed my entire thesis and I had to sort of rearrange and make sure I was quite adaptable to it. So the story behind it was that I planned to actually do my entire thesis based on destructive testing. So I built something and I wanted to see if it worked and to make the test if it worked, it's pretty much just smashing it to pieces or 
seeing its resistance and making sure it actually would survive its entire life cycle. But because of COVID, I couldn't use the labs and I had to sort of adapt. And so luckily I actually learned a simulation based software in the previous semester, which made it a lot more easier for me to actually do my thesis. So yeah, make sure to choose your topics wisely. Okay, so my next piece of advice is about literature review and how to sort of make the most out of it. This might be annoying because you've probably heard this advice plenty of times, but take small steps and do it consistently. But do it consistently in a way where you still have breaks if that makes sense. So the way I did it was that I spent every single day except for two days to write at least half a page or do half a page of research for my literature review and that helped me get in the mindset and the rhythm of actually doing things on time. But I like to have two days of where I just did nothing at all so it just affects myself or go out with friends just to take a break. Um, for me personally, I actually needed a break and it really sort of helped me clear that mind and it sort of makes me much more open-minded, I guess that's the best way to say it. What I mean by this is that you should not procrastinate your relaxation. So think about it from this perspective. Let's say we have two different scenarios. You have one scenario where you're trying to have a break but you stay at home and worry about the entire situation on your faces. But you have another day where you go on a hike with mates to clear your mind, um, clear your mind out. What do you think it's better? It would definitely be the latter. Just because you're sort of forgetting everything in a moment, and you're sort of just because you're sort of living in a moment and forgetting all your problems during that time period. And once you do go back into that mindset, you sort of opened up your mind to more sort of opportunities or angles to sort of tackle that problem. Yeah. So here's a more practical advice on doing a literature review and that's to have one note. Okay, I'm not sure what uni has this but with the case of my uni that I went to, we had one note which is pretty much a software that helps us organize our references and it's just so much more efficient. So let me give you like a quick demo on how to use it. So you're pretty much on your left hand side, the My Library tab, you have an online search and it's a pretty much a library so you can filter out by like different um, search engines kind of thing on Bob so you got your Library of Congress so that's your law stuff I'm not sure what this one is but you got PubMed so that's your medical related stuff you got a uni one which you can add manually by going more and then clicking on uni and then you got one dedicated site now let's, let's say you're researching about tall and short people right and you like this link here it's really useful so you just copy and paste the title and you go over to this page and because it's sort of related to the um, medical field you go PubMed and you search up that title here um, make sure it matches the title or whatever field you are looking at and then you just press enter and it should pop up eventually yep so you found it it's loading it's taking its time there you go so what you do you right click and you add references to your thesis and it should be there here yeah, set a number increase by one so then the next step is you can go to your word document and if you installed it properly you should have your EndNote extension right here so let's say you have a sentence saying uh, Justin is very tall and then you want to use the reference right so all you need to go do is go to EndNote here insert citation and search whatever you wanted to look at. So press enter. Cool, it popped up. Insert link. And there you go. You reference it. And also, by default, this adds it to the end of your references, end of your web doc, I mean. And voila, there you have it. And you just can call it references of bibliography. If you don't have enough to write about, look at the references of your references. If you think about it from that angle, you pretty much have an infinite amount of resources because you're just sort of backlogging going down and down and down and it sort of goes around in the circle. So that'll help heaps. Um, for the case of me, my topic was quite niche and I found that strategy really, really handy. On that note, with the literature review, try to sort of carve out a story that sort of like flows in order. So it makes it much more easier for 
the market to read. So this step is sometimes quite vital, but a lot of people sort of underestimate this. And that's to have weekly meetings with your supervisor. So the relationship between you and your supervisor sort of dictates the, uh, dictates the rhythm of your thesis. And that sort of goes back to my previous point I mentioned in a previous section where I mentioned that you want to have a make a good first impression and can sort of continue that um, idea or mindset throughout your entire two semesters or however long your project is going to go for. And because of how you, the way you facilitate or carry out that conversation with your meetings sort of dictates, also dictates your mark that you're going to get in the end. So make sure to have weekly meetings and ask a lot of questions or anything that sort of provides benefit and plus they're also great for mental support as well. Think of them as your thesis cheerleader. So this piece of advice is something that's going to destroy or hurt perfectionists and that is that the first draft is going to be absolutely garbo. For the case of me, um, I spent way, way too much time focusing on making it look way, way too pretty. And as a result, I sort of could have completed my literature review way more quicker if I sort of thought from that perspective. So if I were to look back and redo it, my thesis, uh, especially with the case of my literature review, instead of just like writing it in a nice um, readable manner, I would actually have my dot point for what I want to talk about. And so that once I've collected everything, I can sort of go back and then make a ribbon. So make sure to just have it clear with like nice dot points and it's readable just in case you make these changes. So you don't ne need to make like large changes at the very last minute. The way I like to think about it, prioritize quantity over quality. So pretty much the reverse of what you would like to do in real life. So if you look at this in the future, you have more to filter out rather than add on top, which is a lot more harder to do. So the rhythm that you want to go for, start with stop points and then synthesize. The next piece of advice is to think from the perspective of a supervisor and submit your thesis draft a few weeks in advance. You want to do this for a few reasons. One, they're going to get really busy towards the end of the semester so they have less time to focus on marking your draft. And then two, you're also going to be busy studying for your finals and submitting that draft. By submitting it earlier, you're giving more time for your uh, supervisor to look at it and also give better quality feedback as well. If your supervisor, uh, if your supervisor is really busy, ask your mates to proofread your draft as well. After you've submitted your literature review draft, the next thing is to ask your IT department for 20 to 50 gigs of free space. The reason why you want to do this, especially if you're doing research, design, or any simulation based um, thesis, is that you're going to use a lot of space. And it comes in really, really handy to have that in your local, um, local uni computers rather than your own personal computer um, for a few reasons. For one, if the files do get corrupted, you can always restore them and look at your past history for the past week. And for two, the computers are much more efficient at running simulation based, uh, running simulation doing design work. And you have like a mouse and everything, it makes it way, 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 way easier. I personally ended up actually using about 48 gigs, which is kind of insane. So make sure to make the most out of the storage that's available to you. My next piece of advice for the stage after, okay, my next piece of advice for after literature review is to have like a mini diary of what you've done each day. This helps like heaps when you're backtracking on what you've been doing and seeing if the solutions from today's results are better than what you've obtained from a few weeks ago. So yeah, make sure to do that consistently. On that note, make sure to keep your files really nicely organized on your computer. It saves so much time. In one of my folders, I ended up having 37 different versions and I had no idea what they did unless I opened them up. And if you're running a simulation based thesis, it takes ages just to open up one document. Make sure to label it with versions, but also give like a meaning description. And it helps much more if you've had a mini diary so keep a record of what each version is about. 
Okay, now the presentations. I'm not gonna give like general like advice that everyone else knows about like controlling the tone and all that jazz, trying the speed, whatever people talk about in TED Talk. Instead, I'm gonna talk about advice that you don't really see that often. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is don't print your script and stick it behind your wall and then read off it. I think this is gonna be only applicable to like a few people, but when I did my thesis, we were forced to do it online and I thought it was like a genius idea to stick my script behind my screen and read off it. But I kind of pranked myself in that instance. So because we were in lockdown for like a few months and we couldn't go on uni, I forgot I actually wore glasses in the first place. So by the time I printed out my script, personal warp, and I was ready to present, I couldn't even read it. So make sure you don't make that mistake. And on that note, memorizing a script is a terrible idea because what you end up doing is you end up making yourself really anxious if you use the incorrect words. Instead, have dot points of what you want to talk about stuck in your head. And even if you do read a script, it's so obvious to the marker that you're reading it off. Okay, the next thesis present advice is to practice with your mates as the audience. Not only would they give you good advice on how to improve your presentation, they'll, but they'll also talk about the elephant in the room when it comes to Q&A. They'll ask questions that will definitely sort of intrigue you and sort of help you better prepare for the Q&A of the actual uh, thesis presentation. On that note, also do a practice run with your supervisor. So for your final presentation, not only will your supervisor be marking it, but also other people. And if you practice with your supervisor weeks in advance, they'll also help you out with like uh, possible Q&A questions as well. My last piece of advice is to assume your markers aren't experts in the subject matter. This is crucial in order to make your presentation as engaging as possible. And if you can simplify it, that means you'll actually understand the subject matter well. It's better to make it easier to explain rather than using a lot of difficult buzzwords and not actually understand what you're talking about. And that will help you with the confidence that you need in order to do well in your Q&A. On that note, use more technical language in your Q&A. Now for the mental health. The first thing I wanna talk about is to talk to your mates as regularly as possible. It definitely helps because they're being in the same boat as you or they're currently in the same situation as you exactly. So because of their experiences, you can also like relate to each other and also bounce back your feelings and emotions. The reason why I did this, it sort of gives me uh, the idea that at least there's something I can still control, control in my life, even though there's so much chaos. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna mention is something I already talked about earlier, but don't procrastinate your re relaxation. Think about it from this perspective. Let's say you're really, really stressed out and there's two scenarios you can do. Hang out with your mates and just chill during a hike or you could stay at home and think about how stressful it's gonna be. If you think about the latter, you're gonna be so stressed out, you wouldn't be able to think clearly and it just ruins the performance of yourself. But instead, if you were able to, to chill with your mates, you sort of like forget and sort of live in a moment. And by the time you get back to work, you sort of opened up new ideas and new fresh perspectives as well. Also, during the hike, you might express to your mates how you're actually feeling and they might provide even better insight for you to manage the situation. Another thing, this might seem kind of dumb, but celebrate your mini victories. What I've realized throughout uni is that I always neglect the successes that I've made and I sort of brush it off and I only look at the side of always constant improvement. The downside of that is that you're also negatively affecting your own emotions. And if you don't celebrate the mini victories, it's just depressing to look at life. The next piece of advice is to accept that you're not perfect, but you are enough. If you think about this from an open mind, nothing is exactly perfect. So you should be proud and accept who you are as a person. And by thinking that you are enough, you're more likely to try and strive for the best outcome for yourself. My final piece of advice is that actions and emotions go hand in hand. The best way to illustrate this is through examples. So there might be one day where I wake up and feel absolutely terrible. And because of that, I don't want to do anything. But if I were to do something and achieve a positive outcome, I'd feel amazing afterwards. And that sort of works hand in hand if you think about it from another perspective. 
As an example, there were like periods of time last year where I was so stressed out that I didn't know work and by the end of the day, it felt even worse. However, there was like a few days where uh, where I felt the same as well, but after doing something and achieving an outcome that sort of progressed me forward somehow, even if it was the slightest, I felt kind of proud of it. So it sort of goes back to celebrating those mini victories and that's how sort of emotions and actions sort of go in hand in hand. So if you don't action anything, you just end up feeling bad, but if you do action it, and even though you're sad, you end up feeling amazing because at least you've achieved something for the day. So that's the end of the video. Please like and subscribe if you liked the video and yeah, take care.